danger. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. $3,000 reward. The above reward will be paid by the Board of County Commissioners for information leading to the capture of the person responsible for the murder of Sheriff Richard Lee. Signed, Mrs. Richard Lee, Sheriff. Woman Sheriff Kimisami? We never hear of that before. Some time ago, the Wyoming legislature passed a law giving the women right here to vote and hold office. Uh, that may be a good idea. It is good, Tonto. Someday, every woman in the United States will have the same right. Do you think her elected to office after her husband killed? Perhaps. But the governor may have appointed her to fill out her husband's unexpired term. Uh, that'd be a hard job for a woman. You know, Tonto, I think it might be wise for us to go to Gunstock after all. The sun will be down soon and... <coughs> what is it, Silver? Hold it right there, mister. You're covered. Well, what do you know about this? All right, lower your hands slow and drop your guns. You're making a mistake, deputy. If you'll let me explain... You try explaining to the ranchers you and your outlaw pals have robbed. Or to that Wells Fargo driver you shot this morning. You've been riding mighty high since Dick Lee was killed, but it's all over now. I take it that Mrs. Lee hasn't had much success in dealing with the outlaws in this territory. Success? <laughs> a woman sheriff? You not like idea of woman in that job? Nobody in Gunstock likes the idea. And yet you obviously consented to work under her. I was deputy to her husband for five years. And when he was murdered, she asked me to stay on a while. But a sheriff's office is no place for frills and ribbons. A woman belongs in her own home with her own man and her own children. Especially a woman as pretty as... As pretty as Mrs. Lee? I would wasted enough time. Now you start walking toward town. And remember, I'm riding right behind you. I told you, start walking. Yeah, whatever you say, deputy. Maybe next time him learn to tie hands of men him capture. Maybe. What we do now? I'm more certain than ever that we should pay a visit to Mrs. Lee. Her record, either of success or failure, may have great bearing on the future position of all American women in politics. Uh, the deputy, follow us when they wake up. Yes, we don't want him interfering with our plans. He seemed willing to have us walk into town. Do you suppose he'd be willing to do the same? Of course, it may be that the reward isn't high enough. Perhaps Claire, we should... I wonder if you realize what this job has been doing to you lately. You're weighing yourself out trying to find those devils who killed your husband. I've got to find them, Mr. Harrison. I want to see them punished. I want that more than anything else in the world. So it's still Mr. Harrison. Well, I'm sorry, Chad. Claire. I realize what your husband meant to you, but it's been almost a year now. It seems a little foolish for two lonely people to go on being lonely. Please, I... I've got the ranch and the cafe. You'll be well provided for if you marry me. Well, no? I'm honored, Mr. Harrison, really honored, and... Well, perhaps someday. After I've found Dick's murderer. There are a lot of people in Gunstock who doubt that you'll ever find them. You know, I heard today that some of the folks are circulating petitions, demanding your removal from office. Well, that's their privilege. The governor appointed me to take Dick's place, and it's his duty to remove me if that's what the people want. But I'll never resign, Mr. Harrison. Not for any reason. All right, it's your decision. May I drive you home? Thank you, but I have some old reports of my husband's I want to go over. Then I'll bid you good night. Good night, Mr. Harrison. Mrs. Lee, don't be frightened. I'm a friend. Bill! Bill! If you're calling for your deputy, I think you should know that he won't be back for some time yet. If you've killed him, I'll... I haven't killed him. An Indian friend and I met him this afternoon. He accused us of being outlaws and tried to bring us in. Well, if you were able to get away then, uh, why are you here now? Because I wish to talk to you alone. 
That's why I waited until your guest had left. I, I don't understand. You wear a mask, and yet... Perhaps this will help identify me. Silver bullet. My husband once told me about a man who wore a mask and carried silver bullets like this. He said that man helped him to capture a murderer by the name of Ridgeway. The murderer's name was Roswell. Yes, Roswell. So you're the Lone Ranger. That's right, ma'am. Perhaps now you'll allow me to help you find another murderer. The man who killed your husband. I don't know why, but somehow I feel I can trust you. And I won't deny that I need help. Tell me, Mrs. Lee, is there any connection between your husband's death and the wave of robberies since then? I'm almost sure the same man is behind it all. And I think my husband knew who that man was. Well, why do you say that? Here's the last report my husband entered into his book. It's dated August 17th. First stage robbery County ever had was reported at 1 p.m. today. Went to scene. Failed to pick up trail, but found heel shot from one outlaw's boot by stage passenger. Will accuse suspect this afternoon. That night, my husband was shot from an alley here in Gunstock. That boot heel he mentions. I have it here, but it means nothing at all to me. That's curious. Mrs. Lee, do you know any Indians around here working as cowboys who wear boots? I've never noticed. Look here. See how even the wear is? Yes. Well, nearly all white men, when they walk, hit the ground with the back edge of their boot heel. That part shows the most wear. Indians, on the other hand, walk with their toes pointed in. They hit the ground with the heel and sole at the same time, and the wear is even. As it is here. Of course, then. Mr. Sammy. Yes, Tonto. This is the Indian friend I mentioned. Deputy, come now. If he sees us talking to you, it may cause trouble. Is there some place we can hide? Well, the, uh, the cell block is empty right now. Thanks, Mrs. Lee. stumble across an Indian and masked man on the Powder River Trail. Masked man got the jump on me, and when they came to, my horse was gone. But that's not the point. If I'd had any help, he wouldn't have gotten away from me in the first place. You had a ten-man posse when you went after those men who robbed the stage this morning? I had two bartenders, one barber, and seven bums off the street. Well, I've tried to get more full-time deputies. Full-time deputies? There's not a man in this town outside myself crazy enough to work for a female sheriff. No? Then maybe you'd like to resign, too. You haven't been much help lately. Oh, now look. No, you look. Do you see this heel? After nearly a year, I finally learned that it probably came from the boot worn by an Indian. You were supposed to have had some experience in these matters. Experience? You're the sheriff, not me. I didn't like the idea when you were appointed, and I don't like it now. You're through, Bill. Through? Your gun and gun belt are county property. Now, wait. Leave them here with your badge. They're all yours. I'm sorry the deputy felt that way. It's all right. I don't need him. But what do we do now? First of all, I think we'd better keep an eye on the deputy. If he spreads word around town that he's been fired, it might occur to the leader of the gang, whoever he is, that a sheriff's deputy might be a good person to do business with. Me keep eye on him, Kim Sonny. Good. Also, try to find out if there are any Indian cowboys working in the neighborhood. I'll make camp in the grove of trees south of town. We'll meet later. I'll contact you sometime tonight. All right. Good night, Mrs. Lee. Good night. Taylor, good to see you. Sit down. What's on your mind? Well, I'm so blame mad, Mr. Harrison, I don't know if I'm thinking straight, but... I noticed you weren't wearing your badge. The sheriff fired me. Can you beat that? Well, Bill, you know how women are. Oh, I sure know how this one is. High-handed, stubborn, 
Bill, I don't understand what all this has to do with me. Well, it's like this, sir. I heard something tonight that makes me think I may have a line on Dick Lee's murder, but I need your help in proving it. Go on. Well, somehow or other, Mrs. Lee learned that that heel her husband found last August probably came from a boot worn by an Indian. An Indian? Yeah. Now, as far as I can remember, the only Indian ranch hand who worked around here when Dick Lee was murdered is that fellow that works for you. I suppose you mean Comanche Joe. But Joe wouldn't. How do you know what he does when he's away from the ranch? You may have a point. And you want to question him, is that it? That's it. I'd give my right arm, Mr. Harrison, to break that gang up by myself. Have you mentioned your ideas about Joe to anyone else? Well, not a soul. I want to talk to him first. But there are other Indians around here. Yeah, I know that. I ran into one this afternoon. He was with a masked man who rode a white stallion. I'm dead sure they're part of the outfit. Now... Wait a minute. You saw a masked man and an Indian? Yeah. Do you remember anything else about him? Well, the masked man called his horse Silver, I think. Why, do you know him, Mr. Harrison? Oh, no, I don't know him. Look, Bill, I'm glad you came to me about Comanche Joe. And I think you should question him. Suppose you ride out to the ranch tomorrow afternoon about 5.30. I'll see that Joe's there. I knew you'd help me. Anytime. Smitty, come in here. You want me? We're in trouble. Claire knows that that boot heel Lee found belonged to an Indian. And Taylor remembered that Comanche Joe had been around at the time. I knew somebody beside Lee would figure that out sooner or later. So I thought you were going to do something about getting one of our gang in a sheriff. Claire won't resign. You took care of her husband, you could have taken care of her. Nothing happens to Mrs. Lee, you understand? Taylor was able to put two and two together. Suppose Mrs. Lee does the same thing. Then she'll come to me with her suspicions first, just as Taylor did. If that happens... Meanwhile, we got Taylor out snooping around the ranch. I doubt if he'll ever get there. He's riding out tomorrow to see Joe. I'll gun him on the trail. With a silver bullet. With what? Have you ever heard of a man called the Lone Ranger? No. Well, I have. I saw him and his Indian friend clean out a gang in Texas. He's dangerous, Smitty. He's very dangerous. And now he's here in Wyoming. So what? So I'm not taking any chances. I'm going to get him before he gets me. You see, Smitty, he uses silver bullets. And when Taylor is brought in with a few silver slugs in his back, I think the folks at Gunstock will take it from there. Especially when we swear that we saw the masked man do the shooting. You know, I think I'm going to like that. I thought you would. All right, take some silver coins out to the ranch house. Melt them down and mold them into bullets for me. 45 caliber. All right, get going. Well, Tom, what did you learn? Me follow a deputy to him go home, Kimisebe, and talk to only one man in town, cafe and ranch owner named Harrison. Did you hear what was said? Uh, deputy say he want to talk to Indian cowboy who work on Harrison Ranch. Fellow named Comanche Joe. Him only ranch hand around here when Sheriff Lee killed. I see. Harrison tell deputy to come to ranch tomorrow afternoon at 5.30. Comanche Joe be there then. Strange that Harrison never suspected that one of his ranch hands was working with a gang. Tomorrow afternoon, Tonto. You and I'll be at the Harrison Ranch. It's about time you were getting here. What have you been doing? I wanted to make sure these silver slugs fitted tight in their cases. How do they look? They'll do. Where's Comanche Joe? He and the boys are over in Horse Creek. They're burying the Wells Fargo box we lifted yesterday. Good. Well, I'm all set. Taylor ought to be riding along any minute now. Good luck. I'll wait here. Right. Hurry! 
Gaetano. Him dead, Kinsami? Not yet, Tano. But he's wounded badly. I think you'd better take him to the doctor in Gunstock at once. I'll try to pick up the trail of whoever arranged this ambush. You better not spend any more time looking for the trail, big fellow. Tano will be waiting for us in town. Let's go. You get away. Tano, what? Keep your hands away from your gun. Mrs. Lee, I don't understand. No? Go inside. Hurry up. Drop your gun. I trusted you. I thought you wanted to help me. I do. By shooting Bill Taylor in the back? So that's it. I had nothing to do with that, Mrs. Lee. When Tonto and I found Taylor, he... Nothing to do with it. Two men saw the shooting. Chad Harrison's word alone would be enough to hang you in this county. But I have more than eyewitness evidence against you. May I ask what it is? On my desk, you'll find the bullets the doctor took from Bill Taylor's back. Look at them. Silver. Yes, silver. And you're probably the only man in the West that fires those kind of bullets. If Bill dies... He's still alive? By some miracle, yes. I wanted to stay at the hospital with him, but Mr. Harrison thought I ought to come here in case you tried to join your Indian friend. Harrison isn't alone with Taylor, is he? Alone? Well, not exactly. The other witness against you, a man called Smitty, is there too. The doctor, of course. Mrs. Lee, it's vitally important you listen to exactly what I have to say. Bill's Taylor's life may depend upon it. First of all, these slugs didn't come from my guns. Mister, your belt is filled with silver bullets like that, so don't... The silver in my bullets is pure silver. These slugs are different. Compare them yourself. Yes, I... I can see the difference. The bullets taken from Taylor's back were silver alloyed with another metal, possibly made from silver coin. Certainly, they were made for the purpose of framing me. Framing you? Last night, Tato overheard Taylor making an appointment with Harrison to question one of his ranch hands about the boot heel your husband found. At 5.30, on his way to keep that appointment, Taylor was shot. Atano and I would have no reason on earth to harm him. But Harrison, on the other hand... Are you accusing Chad Harrison of attempted murder? I believe at least he should be questioned. I, I couldn't do that. Then let me do it. Return my guns and put Tonto and me in an unlocked cell. Then invite Harrison to identify us. I think I can force a confession from him. No man who was ever sheriff would consider such a proposal. All right, I'll do it. You've done a brilliant job, Claire, absolutely brilliant. I have the masked man and the Indian in a cell together. Follow me. Well, you've let him keep his mask on. Certainly, you said he had it on when you saw him before. How could you identify him without it? Well, you're right, of course. And that is the man who shot Taylor. Don't you agree, Smitty? That's him, all right. Well, Claire, I... What's that? Put up your hands. Both of you. Tonto, get the gun. What kind of a childish trick is this? Check this gun, Tonto. This is outrageous. Gun not have silver bullets, Kimisami. So you got rid of them, Harrison. I don't know what you're talking about. Tonto, see what Smitty has in his pocket. You can't keep your hands up. Silver bullets, Kimisami. So you were the one who shot Taylor. Nobody's railroading me for this. Shut up, Smitty. You've said enough. Don't be a stupid idiot all your life. Stupid, am I? Well, maybe I made them, but I didn't use them. Harrison here shot Taylor. I think I've heard enough. All right, drop your guns, quick. Good work, Mr. Harrison. I didn't want it to end like this, Claire. I didn't want to kill anybody, not even your husband, but I had to. Let's get out of here, Mr. Harrison. You always were a fool, weren't you, Smitty? Get over there. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Harrison. I... Always were a fool. Get out! 
Take care of the wounded man. Stand still, you devil. <laughs> Good boy, Sober. All right, Harrison, on your feet. So that's how it all ended, Bill. Comanche Joe and the entire Harrison gang were picked up. Smitty's confession implicated them all. And the stolen money that was buried at Horse Creek has been recovered. Well, you sure did a fine job, mister. I only wish I hadn't gotten your way so much. You were only trying to do your duty, Bill. No man can be blamed for that. Uh, I guess I made my share of mistakes. And the biggest one was being so stubborn about a woman holding office. Bill. I heard the people in town are mighty proud of their sheriff. They want you to run again, Claire, and so do I. But I don't. Being sheriff is a man's job. It takes a man of experience, background, and bravery. It takes a man like you, Bill. However, I may run for the county board of commissioners. Well, then I... I insist at least on being your campaign manager. I really didn't have anything to do with capturing Harrison. The masked man and Tom... Where did they go? Well, I don't know. Well, anyway, they promised to return if any of us ever needed them again. I wonder who that masked man was. Don't you know? Harrison did. It's the Lone Ranger. Oh, 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 o